and welcome back to another episode of the Commander Crucible. On this Commander Quick Look, we're going to be looking at and diving deeper into arguably the most popular commander to come out of Core 19, Yarok the Desecrated. Now, if you haven't seen this card and this deck played on the episode of Game Nights, it went insanely wild. I did not think that Yarok was going to be that good and that explosive, but let me tell you, after I watched that Game Nights episode, my opinion of Yarok completely changed. So let's start off with looking at our legendary elemental horror. Yarok the Desecrated is two colorless mana, black, green, and blue, so Sultai. And he is a 3-5 with Death Touch and Lifelink. And he says, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So again, when I first saw Yarok, or the Pan Horror Monocon, as some have started to call him, I really wasn't too impressed. He's a 3-5 for 5 mana with Death Touch and Life Link. It's pretty good return on your power toughness for your mana cost ratio, but the biggest and most powerful thing about Yarok is not simply that he doubles ETBs, but he doubles them for every permanent, not just your creatures, like a Panharmonicon. The saddest part, and probably the smartest part from R&D about Yarok, is that he does not share colors with the other three blinking commanders, being the Angry Rhino, Rune, Aminatu, and Brago. And so if Yarok were able to even include one of those legendaries, it would break its deck and make it super awesome. But we don't really have to worry about that. I'm surprised to see the reception and the reaction around Yarok, who I initially took as a 40-50% to 50 commander to be such a massive reception. He's clearly a standout commander from the core set. And so with that being said, why don't we dive, dive deeper into a commander quick look about this elemental horror. Keep in mind that these are merely suggestions and a jumping off point for Yarok. Anything that you feel that should be added and that needs to be on this list and isn't, feel free to call me out and leave a comment. So first off, what I love doing in each and every one of my decks is starting with the legendary creatures. Tatiova, Benthic Druid, is going to have when lands enter the battlefield, we're going to draw a card and gain a life. Now we're going to draw two cards and gain two life. The life really doesn't matter, but getting up on two cards is amazing. Especially in a green deck that just wants to put out multiple lands, it's going to be great for us. We have God Eternal Ronas, who is the Crater Hoof Behemoth Jr who has death touch and when he enters the battlefield we're going to double all the power of our creatures that we control until the end of turn and then they gain vigilance. So we're going to double the power and then we're going to double their doubled power. You could also decide to throw in Fib, Fib, Fib I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm probably not, the Lost. So when he enters the battlefield draw a card and if he entered from our library or was cast from our library draw two cards instead. So we can immediately get that benefit of drawing two cards instead, or if we've somehow cast him from our library, we can end up drawing four cards. Up next is the Fallen, so he's the demon with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield. Uh, you may have target player lose three life, and if you do, put three 1-1 one -one counters on Omnixilis. So now, just like Tatiova, we have a couple lands enter, we're going to have an opponent lose six life for each land, and then put six 1-1s on, on Omnixilis for a big beater late game. The Lord of Luxury himself, Gonti, is going to enter and we're going to look at the top 8 cards of a target opponent's library and we get 2 of them, which is great. Gonti is just amazing by himself getting the 1 card, but now getting 2 cards and looking at the top 8, that's a huge chunk of your opponent's deck. And you can target different people. We have Muldrotha the Gravetide, who's just going to act as our Sultai recursion engine, so we're going to get to play our stuff from the graveyard if it ever dies. Venzer, Shaper Savant. When Venzer enters the battlefield, we can return a spell on the stack or a permanent to uh, its owner's hand. So now we're going to get to do that twice. Prime Speaker Zagana, great, I use this in my rune deck all the time. So now when she enters, we're going to double the counters on her because she's going to enter, get that plus, do it again, draw twice as many cards. Get Rog Monster, same thing, you get to play an additional land, but then each time a land card is put into the graveyard from anywhere, we're going to draw a card. Nissa Bastwood Seer, who's going to enter the battlefield, and we're going to search for a basic forest, so now getting two basic forests. 
and Sidisi Undead Vizier. When Sidisi exploits a creature, you may search your library for a card or put it in your hand. So we're getting a double exploit there. And finally, we have Massacre Girl. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets a minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets a minus one, minus one until end of turn. Massacre Girl, I know that she's a little out there, but I, I do understand that she's pretty popular. Just for a lore perspective. So she's going to enter and each other creature is going to get a minus one, minus one. But then with Yarok, they'll get an additional minus one, minus one to start your dying chain earlier, giving things more minus one, minus ones. So just helping you if there's no things with one toughness on the battlefield. Our other non-legendary creature highlights are things like Rampaging Veiloth. Just like Omnixilis, it's going to have landfall. So now for each land, you're going to get two triggers and put two 4-4 four, four green beasts onto the battlefield. Wood Elves, which is basically a staple in any green deck, is going to enter the battlefield and we're going to get two forests, so we can go and get our Overgrown Tomb, or we can go get our Breeding Pool. Avenger of Zendikar, pretty self-explanatory, he's going to enter, make all those little zero ones, ones and then he's going to do all that again for the amount of lands we control. Maul Drifter, now you're paying 5 mana for 4 cards, which is a way better return than 5 mana for 2 cards, or even the 3 mana for 4 cards, which is even better. Coiling Oracle, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, put it on the battlefield, otherwise, draw it. So now you can either ramp up two lands or draw two cards for a two mana creature. Reclamation Sage, getting to destroy an artifact or enchantment twice. Our Lotus Cobra, again another landfall creature. Acidic Slime, getting to hit that pesky land and an enchantment is really just a bang for your buck. Eternal Witness, it's going to enter and we're going to get to bring two things back from our graveyard. The Sire of Stagnation. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player exiles the top two cards of their library and you draw two cards. So now they exile the top four and you draw four? That's some pretty sweet deal. The Hostage Taker, when it enters the battlefield, we're going to get to exile a card and then we get to cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. So now we can grab two things. The Ravenous Chupacabra. When it enters the battlefield, we're going to destroy a target creature in opponent control. So now for four mana, we're going to get to destroy two creatures, which is great. Things like Baleful Strix, which is going to draw us a card, or Tireless Tracker, whenever a land enters the battlefield, we're going to investigate twice. The Royal Elemental, another landfall creature, whenever a land enters the battlefield, we're going to gain control of two creatures for as long as we control the Elemental. Sepulchral Primordial, I hope I'm saying that right as well. It's going to enter the battlefield and we're going to get to take two creatures out of every opponent's graveyard and reanimate them. Noxious Gear Hulk, it's the same thing as the Ravenous Chupacabra. It's going to enter and kill two things and we're going to gain that much life. Shriek Maw, really similar to the Maul Drifter, it's an evoke creature. Uh, it enters the battlefield and destroys target non-black creature, so we get to do that twice. Rune Scarred Demon, tutoring twice. Diluvian Primordial, stealing two instants and sorceries out of everyone's graveyard. Soul of the Harvest, having us draw two cards when we cast a creature, or another non-token creature enters the battlefield, so not even cast. Spellseeker getting us to tutor a couple times, the Crater Hoof Behemoth doing what God Eternal Ronos is doing, Terastodon, destroy up to three target non-creature permanents, now that's six non-creature permanents, the Fierce Empath for double tutors, the Grey Merchant of Ashpadel, so they're going to lose life based on our devotion to black. The Sower of Temptation, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature for as long as Sower remains on the battlefield. Spending 4 mana, taking control of 2 creatures. Now, here's where we get a little bit more combo-y or mana ramp is the Palancrown and the Peregrine Drake. They're going to enter and untap our lands, so they're going to do that twice, so you can Cast them, untap the lands, tap the lands for mana, untap the lands again as Yarok's ability resolves. And the Evolution Sage. This just says whenever land enters the battlefield, proliferate. So you're going to get to have a land enter, proliferate twice if you're running a lot of Planeswalkers in these great black, green, blue colors, which opens up a lot of doors. So now, let's cover the more blink and copying of our ETBs that we're already going to copy with Yarok, but now we want to be able to recur them. So things like Panharmonicon are going to give us more triggers. Bramble Sovereign, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield for anyone, you can pay two mana, one in a green, make a copy of that creature. 
So you'll get the trigger off the initial creature like Avenger of Zendikar, make a copy of it, it comes down, now you're going to get four Avenger triggers. The Tamur Sabertooth, which says pay a one under green, and you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. And if you do, the Sabertooth gains indestructible. This card's really just for paying the two, returning a creature to our hands, and getting to cast it again. And arguably the strongest blinker in this deck is Deadeye Navigator. So it has Soulbound, and as long as the Deadeye Navigator is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has pay two, one and a blue, exile this creature, then return it to the battlefield, so you don't have to go through the extra work of returning it with the Tamur Sabertooth, casting it again, copying it with the Bramble Sovereign. You're just paying the two, blinking it, getting the copy. So now that we've moved on from permanents that do this, because that's what Narok cares about, let's move on to instants and sorceries and artifacts that directly synergize with copying our ETBs. Now, I'm not going to talk about Sky Shroud Claim or Assassin's Trophy, because those kinds of cards, they're for you to decide. I'm here to show you how to get maximum value from Yawk himself. So you can put whatever kind of ramp or removal you want in there. But first off, we have Conjurer's Closet. So at your end step, you're gonna get to blink something of your choice. Displace, which is two and a blue. Exile up to two target non-token creatures you control. Then return those cards from the battlefield under their owner's control. Rite of Replication, which you're most likely gonna wanna kick for the five. So it'd be four and then five, being nine now. Put a token onto the cop. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature, and if there's a kit, you put five tokens instead, getting five ETBs that are all going to be had and then copied again. Ghostly Flicker, which is doing the same as Displace. Stryonic Resonator, paying two and tapping it to copy a triggered ability that you control, and then you may choose new targets for the copy. Crucible of Worlds, this is just to get lands out of our graveyard, maybe we're playing fetch lands or someone plays a strip mine on us and we can just get those back and get our landfall triggers because there's some pretty sweet landfall creatures in this deck. Blade of Selves, the equipped creature is Myriad and whenever it attacks, for each opponent other than the defending player, you may put a token copy that's a copy of that creature onto the battlefield tapped and attacking the other players. Or Planeswalker, and exile the tokens at the end of combat. Now we don't care if the tokens get exiled, we just have them enter, we're gonna copy the triggers. So again, we'll use Avenger of Zendikar as an example. You attack one person with it, you're gonna make two other copies for your two other opponents, you're gonna get the trigger and then a trigger again for each Avenger of Zendikar, getting four times your amount of lands in the plant tokens. Now let's cover some of the enchantments. Things like Zendikar's Royal. Whenever land enters the battlefield, you're gonna make a 2-2. Now you make two, two twos. Path of Discovery, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. That's the mechanic from Ixalan. Reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Then put that card back or put it in your graveyard. So it's just like a pseudo scry, but almost even better because you either get to put the land into your hand or you get to buff up your creatures, make them bigger. We also have the Retreat Cycle. So retreat to Hagra, the black one. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Target creature gets plus one plus zero, oh, and death touch until end of turn, or each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Retreat to Coral Helm, whenever a land enters the battlefield, choose one. You may tap target creep you may tap or untap target creature, or scry one. Re retreat to Kazandu. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, or you gain two life. So those are a little bit weaker, they're just uncommons, but they still serve the purpose in this deck of getting to do those twice is just going to give you a lot more than any of your opponents have. Wild Pair. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you casted it from your hand, you may search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. I just love the sound of this card, it might not be as strong as some other cards that you might run in this deck, but just to play, I, I don't even know off the top of my head, but you play something, you tutor for something else, and immediately goes to the battlefield, you just did something for free with Yawk, it's going to be awesome, you're going to get to do two things, it's awesome. And Necromancy. You may choose to play Necromancy as an instant, but if you do, bury it at the end of turn, or sacrifice it. When you play Necromancy, choose target creature card in any graveyard, and when Necromancy comes into play, put that creature into play as though it were just played, and Necromancy becomes a creature, blah blah blah, text, 
So basically, you're gonna choose a creature in the graveyard, you're gonna enchant them with necromancy, and it's gonna come to the battlefield under your control. Now, Yaroth is gonna allow us to copy that because necromancy is an enchantment, it's a permanent. So, something's gonna enter the battlefield, we're gonna get to steal it, put it on our battlefield, and then get to do it again. Now, if necromancy gets removed, both of those creatures go back to the graveyard, but it's still some sweet reanimation out of our opponents or our own library, or graveyards. So just remember to have fun with this new Enter the Battlefield Commander that does not just rely on blinking its creatures to get the maximum value from them, but rather copying their ETBs right when they happen. I think that's why Yarok is going to be an all-star and a favorite for the new and veteran deck builders alike for a long time to come. He's a solid card with, gr with a great ability that's easy and fun to build around. He allows you to profit as soon as he's out, so he's not really like Rune or Brago where you have to do a few extra steps like paying 2 mana, tapping Rune, or getting combat damage with Brago. I really like this card. I don't know if I per se am going to build a deck around it right away, but I'd love to see what the community does and where they take Yarok. Again, if you haven't checked out the Game Nights episode where Yarok blew up and if you think that Yarok is not that good, I encourage you to go check that out. It'll be in the link in the description below. Thank you for joining me in this Commander Quick Look.